so we were discussing about the scale up issues and what we have discussed is that in the scale up in multiphase flow is actually the major problem and the reason behind the problem is the flow pattern actually which changes from the laboratory scale to the pilot plant scale and the major uh, problem is that even to understand the laboratory scale flow patterns we don't have measurement tools or sophisticated measurement tools available which can accurately predict the uh, flow behavior at laboratory scale but that we will discuss separately but the problem in the scale up is that you have a problem once you start flowing the things and your flow pattern which is actually going to be dependent on the size of the system as well as on the capacity so you change the size of the system or you change the capacity of the system your flow pattern may change and that is the major problem uh, in the multiphase flow reactors and to understand the multiphase flow reactor and the scale up of the multiphase flow reactors so there are different type of multiphase flow reactors available uh, depending on the requirement and i this is just my version that degree of difficulty if you go from the top to the bottom in this list you will see the system becomes more and more complex but that is actually person to person this is my version someone can have a different version altogether depending on the application so like if we discuss about the multiphase flow reactors there can be a gas liquid reaction in which there is no catalyst available i will consider it as a simpler again i am telling it that this is my version this may not be a universal version so the gas liquid reactor without catalyst then we can have a gas liquid reactor in which the catalyst is there but that is in the homogeneous form it means the catalyst is soluble in one of the phases so that is gas liquid with soluble catalyst then gas liquid with the solid catalyst inside that makes us in uh, three phase reactors which we call generally as a slurry column but the velocities involved is not very high so i will still consider it as a relatively simpler column then there can be a gas liquid liquid with soluble or insoluble catalyst or solid catalyst so this again becomes actually the number of phases has increased one is uh, gas two liquid phases are available and one solid catalyst so number of phases you are increasing so the uh, becomes more and more complex then it can be gas liquid liquid solid with soluble or insoluble catalyst so two phase liquids and then again the solid if you are having the catalyst as well as one solid present then it has a two phase solids too so that is actually increasing the complexity but the most complicated systems are we will consider or i will consider it as a gas solid or gas solid solids it means there is a gas solid and the other solid either it's a catalyst or there is a distribution of the solids available so i am taking it as only two solids but it can have a polynomial uh, distribution so it can have a polydispersed solid phase in which different sizes are available so increase the number of phases the different solid uh, sizes is considered as a different phase so if you have a complete distribution you will have actually n number of phases available if you have n number of bins in the solid distribution so that becomes even more uh, complicated so what i said that uh, we have different type of multiphase reactor also available for the different kind of application and i will say that a whole supermarket is available in front of you to so think about a reaction and i will give you a supermarket so i will give you a different variety of the multiphase reactors which can do the same reaction so what is needed in out of this supermarket you have to choose a multiphase reactor which is important for your own application or which can gives the best performance as per your own application now once i say best performance it means better conversion better selectivity it should be environmental friendly so a lot of multiphase flow reactors is available say if i think about the gas liquid reactor which i said that is less complicated i have a variety of application av uh, reactors available so like one of the reactor here if you think there is a liquid which is in the batch gas is passing through the bottom of the column it is being bubbled and it moves upward and even though if the liquid is continuous liquid can be fed from the top and it will go out from the bottom of the column so that can be a simple column arrangement in which you can have the reaction the other arrangement, uh, arrangement can be a simple plug flow reactor kind in which gas and liquid is actually simultaneously flowing inside within a tube so ideally if the length of the tube is sufficiently long compared to the diameter then it can be treated as a plug flow reactor so one can have the reaction in that 
one can also use the CSTR kind of arrangement in which liquid will be uh, either in batch or continuous. If you want to make the continuous liquid, you can put it up uh, from the up and pull it down from the bottom or pull it out from the bottom. They can be agitated and you can inject the gas. So, what will happen? There will be a combined mixing effect of the agitator as well as the because of the gas dispersion. So, you will have a CSTR kind of the structure. You can have the reaction in the packed column in which this packing material can be used as a contactors to enhance the contacting or can be used as also a catalyst. So, gas liquid solid reactions can also be done in a packed bed in which you fill the solid, uh, uh, we pack the solids and you pass the gas from the bottom and liquid from the top or you can pass both gas and liquid from the bottom itself. Uh, so, uh, so co-current and counter current arrangement you can have. You can have a different C plate kind of arrangement in which the liquid can uh, be passed from the top to the bottom, gas can be passed from the bottom to the top and you can have a contacting. So, what I mean to say that you have a whole supermarket available, a whole spectrum available. So, we are not short of the reactors. What we are short of is the understanding of these reactors that what each reactors can do. So, that is what we need to understand and to understand that it is important to see that how these contacting is going to change with changing the geometry, with changing the patterns, with changing the dimensions of the system or with changing the velocity of the phases. So, a whole spectrum is available. Similarly, if you see there the spectrum which will be packed bed, you can have a structured bed, you can have a packing inside which is a structured packing, um, uh, packing inside rashing ring you can put, you can put the catapack, malapack inside the column and you can have a flow. So, you can have all the kind of arrangement uh, to find a suitable reactor combination for gas sol liquid contacting. Now, the again I am emphasizing we are not short of the reactor, we are short of the understanding to develop. Now, similarly uh, we can have the arrangement, these are some more arrangement there we can spray the liquid or we can spray the gas into the column and we can pass the liquid from the bottom or we can spray the liquid from the top and we can pass the gas from the bottom of the column and we can have a contacting. Then we can have a packing, so we can have a solid which is suspended, you can spray the liquid on the solid and the gases can be passed or there can be a plate kind of a tray arrangement where the liquid will be like a simple, if you think about the distillation column, a C plate distillation column that is also a gas liquid contactors. So, you have a column in which there is a plate. So, this kind of arrangement is there. And suppose I am passing the gas from the bottom and liquid is coming from the top. So, what will happen? The liquid will fill here, once the label will be higher, liquid will go down okay. and uh, it will store on this plate, then again it will store on this plate, then it will store here and then it will go out. If you spark the gases here, then what will happen? Gas will pass. Now, this plate can have uh, holes and because of that you will see a bubbles, gas bubbles on these plated. So, it can have a step wise contacting and multiple steps can be formed depending upon what level of mass transfer or contacting you need. Similarly, you can have an impeller inside also the tray and the impeller together so that you can mix the gases properly inside the vessel so that you can have a better dispersion of the gases inside the liquid. So, what we can do? We can have a tray or we can have a multiple layer uh, this uh, agitators and we can have a tray where we will pass the gas. Now, the gas will uh, pass through the kind of a seeps. Once it will pass through the seeps, it will form a bubble. Now, why we need these kind of arrangements? The major reason is if I take a simple column and if I pass the gas from the bottom and if I fill say liquid from the top, if I inject the liquid from the top and pull it down from the water, what will happen? The gas will form a bubble. Now, as you move up, this bubble actually will coalesce and form a bigger bubble. The moment the bubble size will increase, we know that the surface area will decrease and your heat and mass transfer efficiency will also decrease. So, to improve the heat and mass transfer, what we do? There are different methods had been thought and people can put a tray. So, if suppose if I put a tray here, then what will happen in which there is a particular size holes, this bubbles will actually break again and they will form a two smaller instead of one bigger bubble, now they will again form a smaller bubble. 
So, if I have a smaller bubble, I will have better heat and mass transfer. I have a better mass transfer particularly. If I have a better mass transfer, I can have a kinetic controlled regime. So, I want to always govern by the kinetic control. Again, the scale up issues that I want to repeat exactly same whatever I have done at a flask scale. Now, because if I am enhancing the size, my bubble size distribution is going to change because of the coalescence or breaking of the bubbles. So, I want to normalize all the time I want to normalize and I want to get the same distribution which I was getting at the flask scale or at a very smaller scale. So, all these arrangements has been thought, has been practically implemented, some has worked, some has not worked, but whatever it has worked, it has worked only for a particular reaction or a particular system. It is not a universal solution which is available. So, that is the region that it makes the multiphase flow more important as well as complicated to understand and to operate the system. So, and that again makes the multiphase flow reactors the choosing the multiphase suitable multiphase flow reactors for a particular application even challenging. So, what you need? You need to understand your system, you need to understand your requirement and based on the requirement, if you understand what is the requirement, if you understand your system, then a whole supermarket is available in front of you. You have to just go and choose one of them. So, what is needed? Need to understand the system, system, you need to understand the requirement and you need to understand the reactor. Now, once I say the reactor, it means you understand the flow pattern and contacting and also the limitation. So, if you understand this, the about the reactor, you understand about your system, you understand your requirement, we can try to match off. So, but all these three need to be understand and that is what we are going in this course. We are going to understand that how to based on your requirement, based on the your uh, kind of uh, system requirement, based on your requirement, how what kind of a reactor can do the job and how this flow pattern and the contacting these two parameters is going to change with changing the dimensions of the system. And we will also try to briefly understand what are the limitations of some of these systems which are available in the supermarket. So, whatever I discussed similarly you have uh, gas solid reactors where you can have a reaction between the gas solid or gas liquid solid all three. So, you can do it in the trickle bed which is can be operated in the co current or counter current mode. You can do it in the pack bed all three. So, what is that means that if suppose I have a gas phase and liquid phase I can pull the gas phase from the top liquid also can be sprayed from the top and it will pass through the packing. So, it will have a typical gas liquid solid reactions which is all the gas and liquid is flowing in co current path. We can also inject the gas from the bottom and liquid from the top then the contacting can be done or you can have a pack bed. Now, once I say the pack bed, the velocity will be relatively higher, trickle bed the velocities are very low. So, you can have a contacting here also. So, suppose if I have a gas liquid solid reaction, I can have all these three choices minimum, there are more, but I am just going with the pack bed choices. So, we have all these three choices available. So, what will happen if you just change the contacting pattern, it means once you spray the liquid from the top, gas is also flowing co-currently downward you will see a different mixing pattern, you will see a different contacting pattern and if you do it just opposite way around, if you just do the counter current, you will see a different contacting pattern. Now, this both the count contacting patterns or the flow patterns can result to entirely different results. So, just a small change in the contacting will change the phenomenon, will change the overall uh, your operating efficiency. So, that is the reason that what we need to do, we need to understand these contacting patterns. So, we have to understand the reactor, we have to understand the contacting pattern and by changing these two, how my flow pattern inside will be differ. Like in this case, if both are flowing co-currently downward, what will happen? 
your liquid residence time will be reduced, but your gas residence time will be very high because the gases has a tendency to move upward. Now, we are pushing them down. So, it is going to have more stay for the more time. While in the opposite way around if you are doing the uh, counter current then what will happen now the liquid residence time will actually decrease uh, because liquid has a tendency to move upward, but gases are opposing the motion. Okay. But the gas residence time will be reduced because gases has any way tendency to go upward because of the buoyancy. So, this uh, what is forces playing on here is the buoyancy which is favoring the motion of the gas as well as the momentum which will be given. So, you will have a motion upward and that is why the gas residence time will be low, liquid residence time will be high. Now, if you want a very low contacting time, so that the gas and solid or gas liquid comes in a, uh, contact with the solid, but the contacting time can be reduced, you can do it in the pack bed in which you operate at a relatively higher velocities. So, if you do all this pattern, you are going to change some of the parameter like the, I, I tried to explain in terms of the residence time, but some other parameters can also be changed and based on that you will see a different contacting patterns now because you change the residence time from your basic CREs undergraduate studies, if you will see that if you change the residence time, what is going to happen, your flow pattern is going to change, your, your conversion is going to be changed and it may possible that your selectivity also changes depending on the reaction conditions. So, you can have a different uh, kind of pattern and the lot of multiphase reactors available, we will discuss some of them in brief uh, later on this course, but what we want to say is that we need to choose a system approach. Now, what does it mean the system approach that what you want first thing. So, system approach means we are going with the system requirements. Now, what are the system requirement? First system requirement is, so what is the reactor? I already said reactor is nothing but a vessel in which you maintain a proper temperature and pressure to do your reaction. So, suppose this is my system a reactor type of where we want to do the reaction what we are doing we are injecting the reactant. So, first question you have to ask that what should be the reactor type and what should be the contacting pattern inside. Now, based on whatever the reactor type you will choose a contacting pattern will be there and you need to understand whether this contacting pattern is going to suit your application. Now, on what basis this should be chosen? This should be chosen actually based on the economics that whether this reactor system or the whole system is going to be economical for the production or not. Then we need to also see the environmental constraints, we definitely want to have a minimum pollution, we do not want a reactor which pollute like anything, because the sustainability of that system is not good. So, you cannot run that system for the long run. So, one important consideration also is the environmental concern. So, we cannot operate with a very polluted reactor. So, we need to have economics, we need to balance the uh, environmental constraints, we need to do the balance in between these two. We definitely want a product which is very highly selective. So, what we need with the process requirement, once I say that you should understand your process, your requirement, I definitely want a maximum selectivity, maximum conversion, maximum productivity. So, these all three I want for sure as if I am developing a system, I definitely want that these three should be satisfied, okay, because there what is the profitability is. So, we need, I need a profit out of it. So, for that the selectivity should be good, selectivity means once I say the production of the desired material is much higher compared to the undesired material. So, most of the reactions we do is always forms more than one product. So, one product can be desired, another product can be undesired or there can be parallel reactions or a reaction in series and I want to just form a particular A. So, suppose A is reacting, it is also forming B it is also forming C or I can say that A is reacting, it is forming B and it is going to C. I want only the production of the B, so selectivity will be defined as that how much B has been produced to the how much C has been produced or how much B has been produced and how much total product has been produced. There are different way to define the selectivity, you can again go to your CRE books and you can see. So, based on whatever you decide, the way you selectivity you decide, what it means that it is the ratio of desired product to the total product or desired product to the undesired product, I want my desired product to be maximized because there is the market for the desired product or the profitability lies with the desired product. So, I definitely want higher maximum selectivity. Now, maximum selectivity will be achieved and it will be profitable if I can do the maximum conversion. So, say if I am giving A and I have a process which is very selective, but gives a very low conversion. 
So, say my selectivity is 90 percent, but my conversion so selectivity is 90 percent, but my conversion is only 10 percent in a system. And in another system where the conversion is 90 percent and selectivity is say 50 percent. Definitely, I would like to go with this system, though it is less selective, but I am having more product at the end of the day, my yield formation or my productivity for the desired product is maximum. So, these two need to be simultaneously optimized all these three. So, that is the process requirement, then definitely I want the process to be very stable, I do not want to operate a process which is very unstable and a small change in the process condition can uh, go for a runway reaction or can pull it out completely. So, we will not able to operate the reaction or it we uh, have to shut down the reaction reactor. So, we do not want to do that. So, stable operation is again is one of the very critical requirement then definitely we want a easy scale up. It is not like once we go for the scale up we need to put the impellers or we need to put lot of trays, lot of baffles to have the conditions which can be replicated to the condition at the laboratory scale. So, definitely easy scale up is one of the again requirement and then operability. Definitely we do not want a system which is very difficult to operate. Okay. So, very difficult to operate means suppose if I want a, if I design a system in which the temperature should be balanced between plus minus 1 degree centigrade. Now, we know that with the control it is very very difficult we need a very highly sophisticated control system in which you can maintain the temperature within plus minus 1 degree centigrade. So, operability is also a very uh, critical issues. We do not want to operate say at minus 32 degree centigrade, we do not want to operate at say 600 bar pressure. So, operability of the system should also be very very easy or it is very it is not like your operation itself is very very costly or very very dangerous to handle. So, these all are my process requirement. So, once I design a system, we do the system approach, we think about what kind of reactor and contacting pattern we will be taking by considering my economics, my productivity, my uh, environmental constraints and with the process requirements. So, I make a wish list of the process requirement and then the system approach comes into the picture. So, I need all these three, I can see that can I have a number of configurations extremely large. So, what will happen? I said that whole supermarket is available and you can have a different choices. Now, whole configuration if I do that, if I do the permutation and combination and try to find it out that how many uh, configuration I can make out of it, I can have a very large configuration you can handle actually. So, you have to understand out of this configuration whatever you can approach or you can get which one will be suitable for you. Then it is a intuitive decisions making should be limited. So, it is not like most of the time we do in the designing is the intuition that okay, we say that uh, the based on the experience we, I will say not the intuition based on the experience we take a call. So, that should have a limit and innovations are possible. So, we have lot of configuration is available what we are choosing right now is not based on the science, but based on the art. Why I am saying art? Because it is more towards the experience which is leading towards selection of a particular reactor. So, it means still there is a lot of scope if we want to work on the multiphase system or multiphase flow reactors, there is a lot of scope to design a new system, to design a new process, to design a new contacting pattern which may fit, fit to the requirement. So, innovations are always possible or always welcome and a pretty much a scope is available in the field of multiphase flow reactors to do the innovation to get a requirement, a process requirement, a system requirement which you want. Now, Krishna and Sai uh, presented a paper in 1994 and it is a very classical paper in which they have said that there is a three strategies for selection of a reactor. So, you can devise the strategies on the three label. So, the first label strategy is definitely the catalyst design. The first part which I say that let us assume I have a better chemistry available. So, what you need to do to design a new uh, to better chemistry a fast chemistry or fast kinetics you need to design a catalyst. So, 
how you want to do the reaction you want to do the reaction in a gas phase you want to do the reaction in a liquid phase you want to do the use a solid as a catalyst you want to use a soluble catalyst what kind of a catalyst you want you want in a pellets form you want in a tablet form you want in the ring form you want to use monoliths kind of a structure in which the solid is coated on the wall so first let's design the solid okay so you have a catalyst design which is the first label strategies that what kind of a catalyst design I should prepare which will be giving me the maximum selectivity maximum conversion in a very low time. So, first label of strategy should be the design of the catalyst. Then the second level of strategies one should see is that how we should do the contacting so injection. So, now what I can mean by the contacting I can pull say there is a reactor I can use a plug flow kind of a reactor and I can inject both the species A and B together and form the product. So, there can be one contacting it in this way. Second is that instead of doing this the B which we were injecting from this place can be injected at different location. So, this can be a second way of contacting that I am injecting the B in a different location. I can uh, inject it in this way that there is a membrane which is inside and based in the presence of the membrane you are doing the reaction. So, you are separating some of the species or you are selectively passing one of the species which is coming in the contact with the others and that is having a reaction like PM fuel cell we said that we just allow uh, hydrogen to be passed through. So, in that way we can have a different strategies for the contacting pattern. So, you want uh, direct contacting, you want indirect contacting, you want the contacting at a different places, you want a particular uh, phase to be contacted, you want to put a stirrer inside to uh, mix it properly, you want to just mix it with the flow, you want co current operation, you want counter current operation, you want cross current operation. So, you can have a contacting strategies too that each contacting strategies how it is going to play a role. So, first level design a suitable catalyst, design a catalyst uh, having a catalyst which what should be the design of the catalyst you want to choose based on that you can have that what should be my system requirement or my reactor uh, design. You can find it out the contacting pattern whether you want a counter current, whether you want co current, cross current, you want to operate inject at a multiple location, you want to put a stirrer to break them what you want you want to selectivity remove one of the compound how you want to do the contacting. So, once you decide this and once you decide this you will have a better understanding that what should be your reactor design typically what are the design or what are the design uh, available which you can use or typically how you should design your reactor. So, a broader picture will be clear once the broader picture is clear you can go to supermarket or you can design your own reactor and now once you start designing your own reactor or you went to a supermarket to choose a reactor you need to understand that now in this reactor if I do the job how my hydrodynamic flow regime is going to play the role. So, there will be a flow regime which will be moving here now based on the contacting you want co current operation, you want counter current operation, you want cross current operation, you want to a membrane inside to remove selectivity or uh, selectively uh, one of the compound. You want the catalyst should be in form of rushing ring, it should be in form of just a solid pack bed, it should be suspended, it should be in the form of monoliths, it should be coated on the wall. Based on these two strategies you will choose a reactor design. Once the reactor design has been finalized now you need to understand how the flow dynamics inside is going to change with changing the scale, how the flow dynamics is going to happen once we contact these two fluids together, how this flow dynamics is going to result in terms of the final conversion and final selectivity. So, what is needed is the hydrodynamics and the flow regimes of each of these reactors which you are trying to choose of the possibility uh, the configuration possibilities which are available with you out of all those configuration possibilities as I said that there is no limit to the configuration there is very large number of the configuration possibilities are available based on those large number of configuration po uh, this uh, po possibilities you will try to understand the hydrodynamics of each of these reactors 
and the hydrodynamics of the reactor which will be suited for your system requirement based on the profitability, environmental concerns, operability, your selectivity, conversion, you should choose that reactor as a final choice of the reactor. So, what we are going to do in this course, we are mostly going to focus on the label 3 that how the flow regimes or the hydrodynamics inside the reactors can be decided, how it can be predicted. So, that once I have uh, these two label prepared, label 1 strategy is ready, label 2 uh, strategy ready with 3 strategies, we can combine it and get a suitable reactor for the choice. So, this was the background of multiphase flow systems, why you want to understand the multiphase flow systems, why it is complex, why it is very very critical and why still after working since decade after decade, there is still lot of scopes available to do something innovative, to do something new, to have a concept, to have a system which can give even the better performance. Okay. And I said that these kind of a reactors are heart of any industries, particularly petrochemical, chemical, pharmaceuticals, all these industries. And if you increase a profitability or if you increase the selectivity or productivity by 1 percent or 2 percent, it can give you a billion dollar profit in a month. So, still lot of focus is still going on, lot of research is still going on. It is a very hot cake where people are trying to work to get a improvement and now getting the improvement is even more challenging because say I already have achieved in 90 percent, now I want to go from 90 percent to 95 percent or 95 percent to 98 percent or 98 percent to 99 percent. So, this the delta available is very less and that is why the challenge is, is still becomes very very critical and one need to come up with the innovative ideas. So, we will try to see all those things uh, during the course of uh, this due course of uh, this course and uh, we will try to understand that how the contacting pattern and how the mixing pattern inside the reactor is going to change the dynamics. But let us start formally with these basic introduction about the course and before starting the course we will define some of the basic definitions which are very important and which we are frequently going to use. Some of these definition you might be already knowing, but still to make everyone on the same platform, I would like to just briefly go through the important definition which is very critical in multiphase flow and very frequently we are going to use all those definitions. So, first definition is the number density. Now, what does the number density means? Now, I am going to define the class by two, I will say one discrete phase or particle phase and one continuous phase. So, once I say the discrete phase or particle phase or droplet phase, it means that is a discrete phase like I we already discussed that in multiphase flow like in the gas liquid or it is a gas solid or it is a liquid solid or it is a gas liquid solid. Some of the phases will be in the dispersed form. So, once I say dispersed phase or discrete phase or droplet phase or the particle phase, it means I am talking about the phase which is dispersed and once I say continuous the phase which is continuous. So, that is what the way we are going to do the notation and I may interchangeably use these locations, but I will try to be consistent as much as I can, but still if I sometime interchange it actually all means the same thing. So, what we first need is the number density. Now, number density is that number of particles or number of dispersed phase either it can be particle, droplet, bubbles per unit volume that is called the number density. So, n which is denoted by the number density is nothing but the dou n upon dou v. So, it means what the number of particles or droplet per unit volume is number density. Now, it can change if you change the volume why we have defined in the terms of the dou because if you change the volume your number of particle will also change. So, it is on the per unit volume delta v particular delta v or delta n you will get it is number you will get and that is called number density. So, suppose in a 1 meter cube, if I take uh, a cube uh, which is of uh, volume of 1 meter cube, it means all the leg is of 1 meter, 1 meter and 1 meter and suppose there are 1000 number of the droplets are available in this uh, cube volume, then the number density will be 1000 divided by 1 meter cube. So, number density will be 1000 meter cube inverse. Okay. Write it more clearly. So, 1000 meter cube minus 3. So, 
that is the number density and that is very important to understand that if we are thinking about a contacting, if we are thinking about the reaction, I should understand how much of the discrete phase is available inside. So, that is the way number density has been defined. Then there is one of the important parameter which we always say and I have used during the introduction also is volume fraction. Now, volume fraction can be designed for the discrete phase, can be defined for the continuous phase and the definition is very simple. It is a volume of the discrete phase divided by the total volume. So, this total volume can be the volume of the reactor, it can be the volume where the gas and liquid say there is a column in which gas and liquid is filled to the particular height though the reactor volume is higher, but the liquid so will take uh, and gas volume combined is lower will take this volume. So, it is a volume of this as a V where the gas and liquid has been filled. So, discrete phase volume fraction is the volume of discrete phase divided by the total volume continuous phase volume fraction is the volume of the continuous phase divided by the total volume in a two phase system term is epsilon d plus epsilon c it means should be equal to 1. And why it is because if you do that it will be V d upon V plus V c upon V it means what it will be V d plus V c upon V and that is going to be the 1 because the whole reactor volume will be filled either with the continuous phase or with the discrete phase. So, we will see the summation. So, we define the volume fraction that one whenever we call volume fraction it means what I am saying that total volume of that phase particular phase present inside the reactor divided by the total volume of the reactor or system. So, that will be the volume fraction and the volume fraction if suppose it is a two phase system the volume fraction summation of the volume fraction of both the phases will be equal to 1 and why it is equal to 1 is because of this and we are going to use it very frequently. Suppose if it is a three phase system gas liquid and solid. So, I will say epsilon gas plus epsilon liquid plus epsilon solid this will be equal to 1. So, if you have three phase system all the summation volume will be equal to 1 volume fraction will be equal to 1 and the region is very simple as I said that finally, the reactor volume will be the summation of all the volume of the individual phases. So, that is also an important definition then it comes to the bulk density. Now, many of the times finding the individual density itself is uh, difficult and most of the time the bulk density is more important compared to the individual densities. Now, why the finding the bulk density or individual density is very very difficult sometimes. Suppose, I have a bed I have designed a catalyst in which the individual catalyst solid catalyst is of 10 micron size. Now, if I want to measure the density of the system, then I need to ideally do a settling experiment or I need to measure the mass and then the volume divided by volume of the system. Now, because the particle diameter is very small finding the exact volume is very very tough and it is very difficult to have a 10 micron particle which will be completely spherical. So, if it is not a spherical if the shape is different getting the volume is being further difficult. So, what will happen? you will not able to get the exact volume and then change making a, a measuring the mass of a 10 micron meat particle or even lower micron particle is also difficult. So, measuring the density is very very tough individual density. So, what we do? We do the bulk density measurement. So, we based on the Archimedes principle we put a known amount of the solid in a liquid and we say that how much volume has been displaced and based on that you can find it out the density. So, the bulk density is nothing but the mass of dispersed phase per unit volume of the mixture. So, that is the way the bulk density has been uh, been calculated. So, what I can do I can have a mixture I can see that how much mass of the dispersed phase I have entered inside a multi phase what should be the volume what is the volume of the total phase. So, I can have the volume of the total reactor or where the whole dispersed phase is suppose is distributed or dispersed inside the reactor. I know the volume of the reactor I know this much mass I have been put in. So, I can find it out what is my bulk density of the dispersed phase. So, based on that we can have a bulk density which is being calculated and why it is important or critical is that sometimes measuring the individual density itself is very difficult and bulk density is more relevant because at the end of the day we are operating a multi phase system. So, the bulk density definition is more critical. So, if suppose I am operating a pack bed I am not worried about the density of the solid, but I am worried about the bulk density of the bed because that is going to give me the more critical information. So, 
bulk density can also be calculated based on the number density by this formula which is nothing but n is the number density and m is the mass of the one particle. So, number density is what? Number density is nothing but total number of the particle divided by V and mass if you multiply with the mass of one particle you will get the total mass this is nothing but the total mass and this is the volume volume of the whole dispersed phase plus the continuous phase you will get that what is the bulk density of the system. So, that is also a very critical parameter the rho d can also be calculated with the number density or vice versa if you have the rho d measurement you can calculate the number density if you have the mass of the individual phase available with you. So, that is critical and uh, that is being used widely both the things are interchangeably used if you know the number density we calculate the bulk density if you know the bulk density we calculate the number density. Then the mixture density rho m is nothing but the summation of both the bulk densities. So, bulk density of the continuous phase plus the bulk density of the uh, dispersed phase again it is the same what will be the mixture density It's the mixture mass divided by the mixture volume. So, if you do the bulk density it will be the uh, nothing but the mass of the dispersed phase. So, this rho d is nothing but m d upon v this will be m c upon v. So, it means you will have m d plus m c upon v and that is the total mass of mixture divided by the volume. So, that will give you the rho m because this is lot of time will get confused and we say that why we are adding these two density to get the mixture density. So, if I have a individual bulk densities I can just add both of them and I can get the mixture density. Okay. So, this is what we are going to use very very uh, this very useful and we are very frequently going to use that to find the mixture density. So, do not get confused if we add the two bulk densities to get the mixture density and this is confusing because people get confused that why we can how we can add. So, this is the way uh, bulk density can be calculated. Now, this if you want you can also correlate with the volume fraction. Now, what will be the bulk density again? The bulk density is what? The bulk density is nothing but your mass of the dispersed phase divided by the total volume. So, I can say I can also write it out as a rho d as a psilon d into rho d. It means volume fraction of the dispersed phase multiplied by the density of the dispersed phase. So, suppose if I know the density of the dispersed phase, if I know the volume fraction, I can find it out the rho d. Okay. Similarly, this will be epsilon c plus rho c and this will be equal to rho m. So, the bulk density can also be represented in terms of the volume fraction. If I know suppose the individual density if I am using a particle solid and the solid say glass beads I know the density of the glass beads. If I pack the glass bead inside a pack uh, inside a bed or inside a reactor I know the density of the glass beads if I can measure the volume fraction. I can find it out what is the bulk density. Vice versa, if I know the bulk density, if I know the individual density, I can find it out what will be the fraction, volume fraction of that phase inside the reactor. So, I can also write rho epsilon d is nothing but equal to rho d upon rho d. It means the bulk density divided by the solid density or density of pure. So, I can find it out the epsilon d. So, that is the way uh, bulk density can be defined and bulk density you can calculate the uh, number density, so, the bulk density you can find the mixture density, from bulk density you can also find the volume fraction or if you have uh, vol this uh, individual density and uh, uh, volume fraction you can find the bulk density. So, interchangeably you can use all this definition to find the one of the parameter inside. Then there is a dispersed phase mass concentration we will also find it out that what is the concentration of a particular phase or mass concentration. The mass concentration of the particular phase can be find it out the ratio of the bulk density 
of the two phases. So, it means suppose if I want to find the dispersed phase mass concentration, again I am saying it is a dispersed phase mass concentration, it is nothing but it will be the ratio of dispersed phase bulk density to the continuous phase bulk density. So, rho d upon rho c, you can find it out with the uh, dispersed phase mass concentration, many books also re uh, refer it as a particle mass ratio that how much particle is available. So, if you do that how much particle mass ratio is available, you can say that what will be the mass of the dispersed phase divided by the mass of the continuous phase. Because volume will be the same in the bulk density, it will be the mixture volume which will be cancelled out. So, what you can get is that the mass ratio of the dispersed phase also. So, it can also be referred as the mass ratio of the dispersed phase and it can be found with the ratio of the bulk densities. Now, another definition which is very, very critical is called impaction or inertial effect. Now, what is impaction or inertial stage? We will discuss in the next time.